for you, those of you who were here last month, I talked about individual creativity, whereby you know parents are responsible for nurturing the child's individual creativity. <coughs> so this one is a progression from the standpoint that you're talking initially about one person, now we're going to talking about collective creativity. And the key here is the word connect, excuse me, cognitive diversity. Um, let me go and refresh a little bit about what I talked about last month. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do you remember Wuzzles from last month? Right? Yeah. Any idea what these say? Right. Second one? Tear apart. Third one? Probably is true for everyone. Who <laughs> 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 is that person? <laughs> the boss better not be here. <laughs> <laughs> not a good, well, good for you, but not for your organization. As you can tell, you all got it right, right? I mean, I, I think it's, it's a way, this is something I do actually with my daughter. I live in the United States, as one mentioned just now. So every weekend, this comes out in the Sunday papers. I rarely actually get all three correct, and I don't think she's ever done it, but we actually talk about it. I say, honey, what do you think? And the process I use when I do this is I talk aloud. I'm running through the different possibilities, so she at least can see me thinking aloud, essentially. So she, she doesn't say, oh, daddy's going to answer straight away. He's thinking about, he's running through all the different possibilities. And so she does the same thing too. So she, it gives her a way to think about problems. It's not necessarily the first answer that's right. Sometimes you're going to iterate, you're going to try, try and error to some extent before you get the right answer. And always, um, there's sometimes an ambiguity in the answers. And say, fine, honey, there may be two answers for the same problem, which is okay. Right? We also use the idea that in traditional education system, there's one right answer for the problem. I said, honey, it's okay. It's just a question of interpretation, essentially. Overworked, underpaid, versus overpaid, underworked. Ooh, I like that job. <laughs> okay, so this is a refresher about individual creativity from last month's talk, actually. Quick one. Um, the thing about this is, we tend to associate creativity with intelligence, but that's not necessarily the case. Uh, intelligence is actually primarily uh, 50 to 80 percent of it. I see numbers as low as 50 percent of IQ is attributable to genetics, some go as high as 80 percent. But it comes to creativity, only 30 percent of the results for creativity tests can be explained through genetics. So in other words, there's room for you to improve through the attitude and mindset that you have towards improving creativity. So the question is, what can you do to improve your creative skills? Is that 70 percent that can do something well? As I said, this was last month, and I was focusing upon how you as a parent can nurture your child's creativity, okay? As opposed to doing it through schools. Uh, this is a personal opinion, and that is, it's the parent's responsibility to nurture creativity. Because given the type of teachers that we have in Malaysia and also in the United States, I don't see how they can really nurture creative, creativity very well. Because creativity, to some extent, has to be modeled. You have to follow a mentor, you have to follow a model to some extent. But that's just uh, my opinion at this point. So as I say, creativity is not necessarily the same thing as intelligence. We sort of assume you're smart, therefore you must be creative. Um, Tala is not here, but I talked about a lady named Marilyn Vaughn Savant, or Marilyn Vaughn Savant. Her IQ is ranged from 170 something to 220 something. All she does, she's a newspaper columnist. For somebody with that high level IQ, she's not big, really being very, very creative, by the way. So the thing to look for in kids is, you know, a playful imagination. Are they willing to try things out? You mentioned about, you know, going outdoors and trying different things. Explore versus iPad. Yeah. I touch. Nintendo DS, all the different toys. Right? Playful imagination and habit of making and exploring. Try things out, explore, fail. But fail in a graceful fashion. Give them room to fail uh, in a safe way. I mean, that's what I allow my daughter to do. Sometimes it you know, drives me crazy, but that's right. <laughs> One of the things I do, and I'll show it to you after if it's in this presentation, is I think no matter what you do, mommy and daddy will love you unconditionally. You have a solid foundation regardless. But please do well in your school. <laughs> okay. Now here's the, here, here, here's the issue. Um, you know, we talk about education. We talk about elections. We talk about these different issues that are big, complex problems that cannot be easily handled by a single person. So what is the traditional way of tackling complex problems? Right? We get smart people. We throw them in a room and say, go figure it out. Or 
You hire McKinsey. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So you get the smartest people in the room. So this may be the McKinsey people, uh, and this will be the government of picture. Um, okay? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But you get the smartest people in the room. But here's the issue. We tend to think that just because they're smart, they can come up with innovative, creative solutions. That's not necessarily the case, because you know, they have similar perspectives. They have similar upbringing. They think about problems the same way, uh, similar perspectives, and they say categorization, heuristic, predictive models. They tend to engage in group think. You went to a brand name school, you must be smart, so therefore your solution sounds plausible and reasonable. It's that pedigree thing, right? But is that really the case? Just because you're smart doesn't mean you're actually creative, right? Back to the, the, the creative.ne intelligence. Well, that's a different approach, right? You try to get, uh, this is a diverse way to solve complex problems. You try to get smart people. They have to be smart, but not super smart, right? <laughs> <laughs> it qualifies somewhere along here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, <coughs> Hong Kong accent incident. <laughs> I'll talk about that in a long time. <laughs> so the reason I have this, if you go back to this, right? They're all squares. Okay? All squares. That's our mentality. We're all squares. But here, you know, you got a square, you got a circle, you got a star. I'm trying to raise the thought that you need diverse backgrounds put together in a room to come up with different solutions. Diverse solutions to <coughs> complex problems. And why is that helpful? Right. Um, I actually based this presentation from a book written by this gentleman named Scott Page. Not really cool. there on the upper right corner of the book. All the difference. Most of the time, the diverse group forms a group of the best by substantial margin. And he actually did some mathematical modeling that says basically the crowd error, crowd error, excuse me, is average error minus cognitive diversity. Hmm. Okay. He did some fancy math, and I'm like, glaze over. <laughs> Take his word for it, basically, that's what I'm saying. But what kind of cognitive diversity are we talking about here? Okay, That's the key thing to remember. Perspective. What, the question is, what is it that you're looking at? Okay, What is the situation that you're looking at? Because the more perspectives you have, they make it more likely to solve a problem. If everyone looks at the problem the same way, it's kind of like, this is the problem, everyone's got a hammer, you bang it to hell, essentially. Right? <laughs> but if you have a hammer, somebody's got a... I was going to say machine gun, but that's not <laughs> It's too soon. Yeah, really. Okay, you, you have a hammer, you get a toothbrush. You know, you get different tools, of, essentially, that you bring to bear. For all you know, they might actually interact with each other well. So, perspective. You have to have cognitive diversity in terms of perspective. Different perspectives on the same problem, essentially. So, what is it? Next one is categorization. What does it belong to? Once you identify what, what, how will you categorize the issue essentially, right? Is it a software issue or is it a hardware issue to some extent? Or a UI issue? But then we, the question is, now if you have people with diverse backgrounds, they all will have different heuristics to solve a problem. If everyone has the same set of heuristics, you might as well have, let's say you have 10 different people, all equally smart, they all have the same heuristic, you don't need nine of them, right? You need one, right? And then lastly, predictive model. What should happen next? based on all these things that you've done in the past, or rather, ahead of time, rather. Okay. Okay. What is this? Okay. <laughs> Any idea? A brick. Anything else? Wax. <clears throat> Good. Keep on going. Candy. Ooh, rock hard candy. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is my interpretation of it. It's a projectile. It's a car prop. It's a weight. It's a bookend. <coughs> right, it can be used for all these different things. All the different perspectives you can bring to bear upon this, what it looks like a brick. Which it is, by the way. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, suggesting that if you have different perspectives, you can do more. So you're expanding your imagination, essentially. Do not use it as a projectile. Bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've done that before, I'm sure, in college, you know. Okay, can I afford the metal thing? Oh, look for brick somewhere. Okay? That's perspective diversity. Different perspectives, okay? Ooh, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you have seen this before. Yep. What do you think you see here? There's two ways of looking at it, right? Mm. Right? Obviously, you have an old lady, or hag, I mean, the hag or the young lady. This is either Eskimo or Red Indian, 
Mm. This answer was interesting. What do you guys, what do most of you see? A skull or a party? A skull. Skull. Right. You see? I mean, I see the skull, but you also see the faces here. Mm. On the party. See? Different perspectives. And this is obviously a rabbit. 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 So, perspective diversity. Even something as simple as this, we all have different interpretations, I mean, different ways of looking at the same problem, isn't it? Now we go to the categorization. Oh, that's big. No. Okay, how do we categorize these three items? How, uh, you know, the typical mentality being, you know, I'm, I'm quite Western educated, so my thing is, Pig and cow are together, right? <coughs> Any disagreement? Any anyone will say otherwise? No. Okay. I did not think about this. I actually read this. It was came up through this guy's book to some extent. Asians, cows eat grass. <laughs> right? Western viewpoint is cows and pigs are four legged farm animals. Different way of looking at the problem. Different categorizations, essentially. Right? Categorized differently. Because this is the relationship. Cows eat grass. Here you identify the attributes. So this is a relationship. This is uh, elements of the cow relative, uh, the cow and the pig independently. Mm. Okay. Cows eat grass. I was, I was actually kind of fascinated because I never thought about it that way. Makes sense. So you have different categorizations in terms of diversity. Okay. I, I never knew this, and I'm Asian. Oh, actually, the term I've been told many times is banana. But okay. so do you see? Do you see the Western way or is it Asian way? This one. Oh, you see the, the yeah. way. Anyone sees it the West? Asian way? I'm curious. Anyone? <laughs> see two. That's good. See it as bacon stick. Malaysian. The last night, remember the presentation I did last night? It was kind of risque, <laughs> to say the least. Malaysians. <laughs> yeah, let's go on to the food part. <laughs> food channel X. Now, here's the diversity. It all depends on the difference, you know, depends on what you work with. You, you, you always form some informal rules of thumb in your mind about what you're going to do about how to handle situations. Okay? So, it depends upon your training, your upbringing, your education, your upbringing. So, there are many, many rules of thumb, and I don't know what they are, so I'll just leave it up there like that. And predicting model diversity. That came out last month. Right? Uh, here's, here's a situation. There was a story that was told to me at an event in KL. Right? Right. This was a dinner of all things. This lady was talking about toilets. Oh, interesting. So the thing is this. The how guy says, you know, I have the teachers to wash our hands after. And the other teacher's got a pee on her hands. <laughs> okay. This was the event I went to, actually. <laughs> it was a very high, polluting sort of event when they talk about pee. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, I was at this event, and this gentleman sitting next to me, a Cambridge guy, says, so what will an MIT man say to the situation? <laughs> I thought this whole thing was stupid, by the way. <laughs> it makes sense. It was kind of stupid. So being me, I said, you know, MIT design sanitation system. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're assuming that you're Earth and there's gravity. Right? You reframe the problem for him. So what's the problem in this case? It flows. <laughs> the P is then a fluid. <laughs> kind of like, you know, sort of thing. The camera kind of tell me, it's done. He burst out laughing. He's like, that's an original answer. So it was actually an interesting uh, thing was that evening at the Oxbridge event. Um, we actually had, after that he totally loosened up with me, we had a good chat to the point of a lady at the same time she came up to me after when there was break, she said, do you know him? You guys were getting off fabulously. I said, well, not really, this is my first time, but I told him, you know, all those things. She said, oh, that's pretty cool. So she actually asked me to apply for the brain game program in Malaysia. Mm. But, Toilet humor is universal. Sorry? Toilet humor is universal. Yeah, that's how to do it, space. <laughs> Because the thing is, you know, the assumption is you're nurse, it's gravity, right? The funny thing I thought about it after the fact, only an MIT person can give this kind of answer. You know, MIT rocket scientist. So here's, here's the question. 
if one of the necessary conditions for diverse creativity, for sort of smart, quote unquote, smart creativity, it has to be a complex problem. If your toilet is jammed, do you need a team of people to fix the problem? No, you don't. The complex problem is the conditions are sort of uncertain, the solution is uncertain, obviously, the process too is uncertain. Simple things in life where I actually did, I should have done this as a two by two matrix, it's kind of strange consulting come next to me. Uh, two by two matrix of where a complex problem lies, uh, excuse me, in terms of known problem, known solution sort of thing. Okay? In this case, a complex problem is known problem, don't know how to get to the solution, don't know what's involved, in fact, in terms of the process. So you're trying to get people of diverse background, you know, all the four different um, this perspective. Right? Categorization, heuristic, and predictive model. So that when you try to detect <coughs> the complex problem at hand, we have a greater range of possibilities. You want a greater range of possibilities so that it may actually help out with this complex problem, whatever it is. The number one in relations is education. Right? Uh, let me talk a little bit about wisdom of the cross. I'm sure you have heard of the phrase wisdom of the cross sort of thing. Right? Um, that's actually a special case of diverse creativity, but it has specific requirements which are not fulfilled by, you know, complex problems. It's actually a pretty straightforward. Um, wisdom of the crowds, one of my friends said that the difference between an expert and wisdom of the crowds is, do I have the slide? Um, an expert is somebody who has deep knowledge of just part of the problem, okay? Whereas wisdom of the crowds has a complex view but a social solution to the problem. So it's basically trading off completeness versus social, essentially. Unfortunately, I think it's fun, but here you're trying to just basically choose a solution for what's up there. Okay? So in business, it's actually quite important to be creative nowadays. That's why we talk about, you know, business innovation, so on and so forth. The key to thinking differently is to start perceiving things differently. It's kind of what we're talking about, perspective, right? To perceive things differently, you must export the divergent ideas. Places and people. Don't keep hanging out with the same crowd. Certainly. This is an interesting story because years ago when I was in college, I just out of college, I don't remember what this exact time frame was, but you know, I was thinking to myself, I actually don't understand women very well. So what else is new is still continues. <laughs> so I actually subscribed to a feed, uh, women's magazine. Uh, the States, I think it was South, I don't remember. So I looked around, you know, you see me and a guy sitting in a bookstore looking through Vogue, Cosmopolitan. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all these are aspir aspirational. It's like women read this because they want to look pretty. They want to have tons of money and so on and so forth. For us, I ended up getting something called something because it's more down to earth. Like, how do you deal with money problems? How do you deal with career problems? So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Actually, it's got good career advice too, to some extent. Um, it didn't help my perception, or well, not perception, understanding of women very well, nevertheless. But it was, some, it was my attempt to try to do something different with respect to learning the world. So, this is what Jobs had told and reported to me as a creativity is just connecting things. The challenge is there's so many things out there. The question, what path are you taking? What is the connection? What are the relationships that you need to be thinking about? Okay. Is there any way for you to launch a YouTube video for me? <coughs> Apple Thinker. Steve Jobs. Okay. I think this is a really cool video because it's actually narrated by Steve Jobs. You gotta try different things. It's a PDF, so you so may have to do a YouTube search. Think different Steve Jobs narration. The man's a genius, by the way. But he's a tyrannical genius. <laughs> he's a one of kind. Yep. Yep, that was before that. 2 million views, 2.4 approximately. <coughs> well, that was not part of the video. Here's to the crazy ones. Steve Jobs. The misfits. The rebels. The troublemakers. The round pegs and the square holes. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, 
disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Cool, is it? Because it gives a man credit for being an incredibly narcissistic genius. <laughs> Okay, yesterday I had a presentation at webcam and I actually used quite a bit of, you know, off-color jokes. So what told me I had to say, say something about sex tonight for whatever reason. <laughs> this guy, Matthew Ridley, wrote a book called The Rational Optimist, and his thing was, I just have sex. That's how they multiply. That's how they propagate. <laughs> okay, well, thanks to you, I had to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom's here! <laughs> But knowledge is collaborative and accumulated. I think that's quite true because that's how civilization progresses, right? We work together to create new knowledge, but you have to build upon what's there before. Otherwise, you have to reinvent the wheel every time. So I thought it was actually an important phrase collaborative, which is what I've talked about, right? And cumulative. So, some reference, I try to put references on the things I use when I do the presentation. Okay, question and answer. Right, okay, I'm a troublemaker too, by the way. Uh, there was some mention made about Khan Academy just now. And I'm sure you all know who Khan Academy is. Some of you, most of you. Right? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so a friend of mine, Sue Hai, and I have been working on this for some time. Khan Academy, the VM version, essentially. Okay. Let me take a look. Excuse me, we're focusing on math because of his background, which was the background, right? We take the math content, and he curated it such that he meets Malaysia's math curriculum, the way to provide for free to Malaysian students, right? With the DM subtitles, four months from four, five math, from four, from four, 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 five additional math. Somebody say, what about primary school? Too boring for him. <laughs> <laughs> primary one math, one plus one. Well, actually, they haven't got to that point, probably. So we focus on this because it's actually the more interesting stuff from his standpoint. So we're in the midst of uh, getting help, uh, excuse me, requesting, soliciting help to do the translation piece. There's two parts: is the curation and translation. The curation is done, translation has yet to be done or completed, rather. So we actually have some of them up. So this is you know rounding whole numbers. It's in Malay. You can tell from here. Right. So this is in English. Narration, narration is in English. The subtitles in Malay. We need help. So we're going to have a website, Khan Academy B in Malaysia. It's kind of right on the design, uh, Khan Academy BM.info. And we actually talked with the Khan Academy guys in California and some in the States. And they said, okay, you can use our name. So we do have their permission to use the, the, the name Khan Academy on our website. Pretty cool. That was gracious of them. So form one, two, three, four, five, math. So we need help with the website design because. I'm a back-end guy, not a front-end guy. Pretty is not my full strength. <laughs> Translation, as I mentioned, and uh, there's a subtitling issue that I need to work on and I haven't figured that out yet. So we need help. Come up to me if you have any questions about that. Okay. That's our education. So I'm sure that you know the Khan Academy is not just about content, it's also about you know, practicing the Khan Academy exercises and all that. It's in English. So we're hoping that through some over some time, the kids, when they hear the narration in English and the subtitle in Malay, they will begin to associate. They will begin to learn English. Though it's subject specific, at least they will have heard it often enough, so it sort of sticks in their mind. That's just a hope. We don't know how that's going to work out, actually. Okay. Now, onto the lecture stuff. Charlie Baker, that's true. I just created a website called mycolumn.net. And here's a question Who took? Who tweeted us here, by the way? I'm just curious. Anyone above a thousand followers? <laughs> I'm close. 999. <laughs> <laughs> Can I join tonight? <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, I actually got, well, I, in a sense, have over a thousand followers because of the number of Twitter accounts that I have. 
Any idea what that number is? Based on this, uh, you know, Gopal thingy. It's all related to the elections. I have two hundred, at least two hundred twenty-two Twitter accounts, each corresponding to the parliamentary constituency, by the way. So I created okay, a Facebook a Facebook page, excuse me, and a Twitter account for each of the parliamentary constituency out there. Why? Facebook's for sharing. Twitter is for election monitoring. <laughs> Because these guys are really rather unscrupulous, I will think. So this is a way. I'm not sure whether it's going to work. We're going to try it. It's worth a shot, right? Worth a shot. Okay. So I actually got the data for GE12. Turn on You know how long it takes to create one of accounts and Facebook pages, and more important, just as importantly, GPS coordinates and all. <laughs> Took me a long time to get a GPS coordinate, and I'm not sure whether they're actually, you know, that. The same as e the uh, election commission, but yeah, one person, <laughs> right? I did this actually in 2010. I was looking ahead already at the time. I don't know when the election will be out, but let me do it. Right. So the 222 all these little blue thingies. What do they call them? Blue thingies. <laughs> I have no idea. So you know, you can drill down. You can see all that where they are. So you click on it, you can go, oh yeah, Facebook, oh, this is a Twitter account. This is three followers. I actually have some that have 20 to 25 followers with zero tweets. <laughs> They're interested. That's how I got over a thousand followers. Right? So, this is kind of cheap. I have no idea what Bakrig is, but they're all pointing back to this website, my account. Mm. Facebook, share. So this is for election monitoring, I think, I hope. This is for sharing. So this is my effort to try and do something different. Right. So I need to redesign the Google Map pop-up because I'm not very good at UI. And I suggest we welcome on making this useful. Um, I'll talk to the Versi guys at some point if they're interested mm. to see whether they might be going to be useful. <coughs> I don't want to talk about yeah. <laughs> Don't have to. This is a startup I'm doing in Singapore, uh, but they could get a compliment to Google's project class. Uh, let me see whether you got the thing I'll show you again. Oops. Oh. Okay. Is it on? Yeah, that's my, yeah. My daughter is kind of feisty. Okay, impertinent to say the least. So she, 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 she shared an email with me and I said something like, honey, you're such a loving child. child. I'm as loving as a 12 year old can be, okay? Just be happy that you don't have a boy. <laughs> <laughs> you should be in my son's. <laughs> but as I said, you know, my, my, my thing every time in, in the email center is forever loving. Regardless of whether she does well in school, please do well in school. You know, daddy will love you just the way you are. But at least she will. The, the thing I care about is whether, it's not so much whether she does well in school, the question is actually whether she works hard. And she does. She's learning to be more self-disciplined. At this point, she's in Shanghai. She's been in Shanghai for a month by herself, but not by herself. With her IE, her, my sister daughter, her auntie, and other And she goes to work in the morning, comes back in the evening, my daughter's by herself. Surfing the internet, doing homework, I hope. <laughs> so she's a very lucky child, I have to say. You know, from the step one, she's a tennis of opportunities. One of the things I try to encourage with respect to her is cult, uh, kind of like the presentation we did last month about cultivating creativity. I try to apply some of the things that I read about and try to help out to be more creative. Uh, she's actually a prolific writer. We mm -hmm. self published a book for her in May or June this year. It was about 101 pages, just came over 100 pages. So she's like, ah, I'm a published author. She was a self published, doesn't matter. So she actually has a Tumblr blog that says, Official Published Author. So she's actually quite proud of that. The problem is I have to edit them. She's on book number four right now. I'm still catching up with number two. So it's been fun raising her. Um, that's my presentation. If any questions about the stuff I'm doing for the Khan Academy, Khan Academy BM, excuse me. Grab him. Huh? Grab you. Thank you. Gently, please. Gently. <laughs> and <clears throat> what is the um, mycom.net, which is the Google Map or mm. Facebook, Twitter account. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.